Hi guys, it is Mr. Fed. Welcome back to the channel. I am back in the man cave and I thought that I needed to drop a video to you to quickly talk about Xenoblade Chronicles X uh, and the Nintendo announcement that this will be porting over to the Nintendo Switch in 2025. Um, now, I dropped a very quick short for this channel um, about 10 days ago before the announcement asking people which game they'd prefer to be ported over to the Nintendo Switch out of Star Fox Zero or Xenoblade Chronicles X. Now, because my channel is still smaller than a pisshole in the snow, no one actually replied to that short, um, but I boldly declared in it that I would rather have Star Fox Zero simply because Star Fox Zero is a better game. Now, I have said on this channel before that I am a huge, huge fan of Xenoblade Chronicles. Um, these four games here, five really, if you count the DLC in Xenoblade Chronicles 3, because that might as well be um, Xenoblade Chronicles 4, um, I've said that these are the greatest games ever made in the history of video gaming. I would quite happily spend hours and hours and hours and days at a time playing these games and in the Xenoblade Chronicles um, universe. Now, Xenoblade Chronicles X um, is a little bit of the black sheep of the family. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X, what's the best way to, to describe it? It's got Xenoblade DNA in it, but it's not linked to the core or the main series. Um, it's the best way I can describe it. It's not a sequel to Xenoblade Chronicles. It's not a prequel to Xenoblade Chronicles. Xenoblade Chronicles X, is a spin-off. Um, it's got completely different characters, completely different world, um, and completely different kind of storyline. Um, now, the YouTube videos that I've seen since the announcement that this is being ported over to the Switch have been full of YouTubers um, pretty much losing their proverbial shit uh, with excitement. Now, I am excited, I, you know, I do want to get this game on the Switch to finish off my Xenoblade collection, uh, and that's, that's pretty much the only reason really, I'd love to have the whole Xenoblade series on the Nintendo Switch, um, but perhaps kind of a little bit bubble bursting here from Mr. Fed, Xenoblade Chronicles X as a game, it's good, but I just don't think it's worth some of the overreactions that I'm seeing on social media. So where I'd give every single one of these games in, in Xenoblade Chronicles, these are all 10 out of 10 games, Xenoblade 1, 2 and 3. For me, they're all 10 out of 10. They're all extremely replayable and I could just lose myself in these forever. Xenoblade Chronicles X, on the other hand, I would probably give this between a 6 or a 7. If I gave it the benefit of the doubt, we'll settle on a 7 out of 10. So it's a good game, but it's not a game that you would really get, um, you know, hugely, hugely excited about. There are a lot of pitfalls in this game, and I'm going to quite happily go through them in this video to explain why I think the announcement that this is being ported over onto the Switch is just full of massive um, social media overreaction. Um, now, if you've not played it, I'm sure you will find it um, a decent game um, because not a lot of people had a Wii U, let's be honest. Um, but if you have played any of the previous Xenoblade Chronicles games and then you come to play this, then you might be a little bit disappointed. I mean, so you control a kind of a character. Now, where in the main games you control three main characters, don't you? In the first game, it's Shulk. In the second game, it's Rex. And in the third game, it's uh, Noah. Um, you know, they, they are really, really well scripted characters and, you know, you really get emotionally attached to their dialogue and to their friendships and to their storylines. In Xenoblade Chronicles X, you control an avatar, a plain old avatar, and, and even the avatar isn't that good. Uh, the you, you create your own avatar and I guess you try and create your avatar in your own image, uh, as I try to do, and note the word tried, I tried to do. I mean, I'm not that difficult to replicate in, avatar, in the avatar world, if you think that I'm just some sort of generic looking white guy with short blonde hair and blue eyes, I mean, you'd think that would be 
the the uh, nuts and bolts of create uh, avatar creation, but my avatar that I tried to create looked actually absolutely nothing like me. So the actual avatar creation is pretty thin on the ground. Another thing is that your avatar doesn't speak through the entire game. He might as well just be a complete deaf, dumb, blind mute. I had no emotional affiliation with my avatar. I didn't care about anything that he did. He didn't say a single word. And when the other characters spoke to him, you know, he just, it, it, it was just nodding and agreeing, you know, just really, really sort of poor um, storytelling and emotive gameplay, really. If you think that in the previous Xenoblade Chronicles games, at the end of Xenoblade Chronicles 2, I was so attached to those characters. I mean, that brought me to tears. I was crying at the end of Xenoblade Chronicles 2, like I was a 12-year-old girl that just attended her first Taylor Swift concert. Um, so that's the first issue I have with it. I'm, I, you know, I didn't get invested in the characters and I didn't get invested in the story. Uh, the second issue I have with it, um, and this is going to be controversial, is, as you can see it on the front cover, is the actual mech. Um, now, people call them mech. I'm from a certain age. I call it a transformer. Um, and it's, a, it's kind of a selling point of the game, isn't it? But I found these transformers to be large. They, they were cumbersome. Um, they didn't add anything really to the game. Uh, the combat was actually worse when you were inside one of your transformers. And the transformer was so big that it actually struggled to navigate around some of the open world and some of the scenery and some of the other towns and scenery sets in the open world. So I found that a real drag as well. The second issue is that, is that the Transformers are so expensive um, and you do need them to defeat some of the final bosses. But if the final boss defeats you and your Transformer is destroyed, um, then you can f pretty much forget about buying another one straight off the bat because they're so expensive. You're going to have to do probably a little bit of grinding in order to save up enough money to buy another Transformer to go and fight that boss all over again. Um, so that was a that was another issue. I mean, it transforms from a robot um, to a kind of a land terrain vehicle. The land ter the land terrain vehicle looks exactly like kind of Del Boy's uh, three wheeled van in Only Fools and Horses. It doesn't look very good or very pretty at all. Is that the best design they could have had for a land terrain vehicle? Um, yeah, so it looks like a little bit like um, he's driving around in old Trotters independent trailers. Uh, another issue with this game is the is the probing. Um, you have to go around the world and you have to mine for minerals in order to generate money, create weapons, create armor. Um, and if you put your probes in certain areas on the map, then uh, that will dictate how many, how much money or how much uh, minerals you get to craft your various weapons and your items. The problem is you need specific types of probes placed in very specific types of places in order to maximise how much you mine and how much wealth and materials you generate. But the game doesn't explain very well where you should put your probes and it really ends up being a lot of guesswork. Um, you know, and if you put your probe in the wrong place, you're kind of almost very loath to go back to it and make changes because you find you change one probe, then you could change 10 or 15 probes. You know, it's not a simple task once you've laid out all your probes. I mean, there is a way that you can mine more if you place similar types of probes close together. But again, not really well explained that well in the game. Um, and it's very difficult to kind of know um, by placing two probes in separate areas of the map, whether those probes are even close enough or will indeed even link up. So there was that issue as well. Um, the final issue that I will say about Xenoblade Chronicles X is the difficulty spike. Now, Xenoblade Chronicles, the main game series, I mean, they've got a difficulty spike, but it's a very... Uh, stern but fair difficulty spike. Um, in Xenoblade Chronicles X, uh, you could stumble upon um, a, a, a creature which is sort of massively over-leveled, and that creature will wipe out your entire party with one 
inherent swing of its tail, um, which you might not even see coming. I mean, this, this thing might be flying in the air and he'll just look at you and that's it, your party's dead. Um, so it doesn't really separate the different levels or the level design uh, of the creatures that you have to fight that well. So there, there are a few, a few, few issues that I did have with it. Um, I don't know how the map and the probes are gonna work without the Wii U gamepad, that will be interesting to see. I have heard that there will be some uh, additional stories in the Definitive Edition, uh, the Definitive Edition, so that would be interesting to see as well. So yes, this game is good. Yes, I, I'm look, I, you know, I do want it ported over to the Switch to complete my collection, but no, I am not with all the other things on YouTube and social media that are ranting and raving about how amazingly excellent this game is and how it's like the best Xenoblade game in the series because it is far from the best game in the Xenoblade series, and you can take that from a huge Xenoblade Chronicles fan. Of course, it's all subjective, so hit me with your opinion in the comments. What do you think about Xenoblade Chronicles X dropping uh, on the Nintendo Switch? Uh, if you'd like to actually comment on, my, on the short that I posted 10 days ago, that might get some comments now that this announcement's been made. Um, so yeah, that would be great as well. Um, I'm going to leave it there. I have plans to post on the channel a little general channel update, but I'm going to postpone that now for a little while because I felt that I needed to talk about Xenoblade Chronicles X first and foremost. So that's the end of this video and I will catch you in the next one.